Vivarium, directed by Lorcan Finnegan and released in 2019, is a brightly lit Escheresque-like science fiction thriller, which can be categorized into my absolute favorite genre, Twilight Zone-esque horror. From a story by Finnegan and Garrett Shanley, the film exists as a co-production between Ireland, Denmark, and Belgium and stars Imogen Poots and Jesse Eisenberg as Gemma and Tom, an unmarried couple who decide to look into the housing market. The film opens with a clip of the parasitic cuckoo bird chucking everything but itself from its nest. It then outgrows its parents while remaining in the nest, greedily eating everything they bring it. This is done quite well, and essentially explains the plot of the film as well as the monsters, or aliens, or interdimensional beings, or perhaps even bird-type terrestrial creatures, as this is never truly explained beyond the metaphor of the cuckoo bird. It may well give too much away, as well as too soon, but without the cuckoo metaphor and explanations, we would likely be completely in the dark as to what exactly is going on in the film. Tim and Gemma go house-searching and meet Martin, a completely cracked out real estate agent who convinces them to view a house at Yonder, where availability is limited, despite the fact that no one is there. They follow Martin in their car, and upon turning the corner, if you watch the clouds, you can see they enter the vivarium when they turn left, succumbing to the loop, leading me to believe they are actually in a nest type structure. It is round, and they travel about it in circles, at least in my theory. Martin shows them the house, mysteriously disappears, and it is then that they learn they cannot escape. Driving simply leads them through the brightly lit Escheresque, artificially depicted and slightly off, slightly eerie and under the surface dark and brutal urban environment that they have become completely entrapped in. The first morning, Tom climbs the roof and views what appears to be a never-ending universe of identical green houses. Trying to follow the sun leads them in my theory, in a similar circle directly back to House 9. Although I am likely wrong, and for analyzation purposes, it doesn't really matter how this world works. Its rules and definitions are almost entirely left to your imagination, beyond a psychedelic scene near the end. Tom sets the house on fire, and in the morning they awaken to a new baby boy and a nice unburnt house. The child comes only with instructions. Raise the child and be released. We cut to three months in the future, as the couple have been unable to escape and are being broken down by their situations and the environment, which are increasingly becoming worse as the boy grows very rapidly, is completely insane and in most ways quite unhuman. He screams, not unlike a baby bird might, constantly demanding attention, obsessively observes his parents, and eerily mimics their words and mannerisms, as well as annoyingly pretending to be a dog, despite never seeing one. It seems the environment, the food, which mysteriously appears outside via boxes and has no taste, the child, and even the artificial lack of wind and strange sun and clouds, all weigh on and slowly destroy the couple. In my opinion, Tom has an awakening Realizing this boy is in no way human, and they are indeed entirely victims, he decides to starve it. Gemma, who develops feelings for the boy, intervenes, although later she regrets her decision. The couple emotionally distance over time, as both bodies are shown to be deteriorating. The boy begins watching strange TV, disappearing in the day, and returns with a strange book, given to him by someone he cannot reveal. Gemma tricks him into mimicking the mystery entity, to which the boy's eyes roll back into his head. He develops throat sacks and begins making scary, demonic, or alien-like noises. Although to me, he really resembles a bird in his mannerisms and movements. Over time, the boy becomes an adult, and Gemma and Tom have reunited. Earlier in the film, Tom accidentally burns the lawn with a cigarette and becomes obsessed with trying to find what is under the surface, as it appears entirely faked. He digs an immense hole and eventually finds the corpse of what is probably the previous tenant or captive inside of it. 
He is eventually buried in it and has worked all this time to dig his own grave. Tom hits an all-time low and appears to be dying. Gemma begs the man, who has begun locking them out, to help them, to which he brings a body bag and bags Tom. Gemma attempts to kill the man, managing to injure him. He flees underneath the curb, which again to me hints visually that this is some type of circular nest and he is pulling back the branches and going within. Gemma chases him beneath and goes through what appears to be a variety of alternate houses and worlds, each with similar couples raising similar boys, all in various states of despair. After searching the internet a bit, the director flat states these are alternate dimensions, and Gemma is not made for them, or vice versa. Thus, she is ejected until she returns to her dimension. Eventually, the boy explains to Gemma she has done her job, and like a good mother, it is her time to die. He bags her, and through the bag she tells him, I am not your fucking mother. The man drops both bodies into the hole, takes Tom and Gemma's car out of yonder, and travels to the real estate office from the beginning, finding the original Martin barely alive. He bags him and replaces him, taking his place in the cycle to bring new couples in as surrogate cuckoo alien parents. Overall, whilst dwelling in my absolute favorite genre of all, Vivarium does not hit as hard as I would like. Do not get me wrong, it is done well, acted well, written well, and executed well, and is a powerful film. And whilst dwelling in a genre that is defined by an ultimate grandeur of mystery, Overall, there's not all that much mystery to figure out. The title, Vivarium, which the definition of is an enclosure, container, or structure adapted or prepared for keeping animals under semi-natural conditions for observation or study as pets. An aquarium or terrarium flat out explains the plot and the mystery, as well as the cuckoo beginning and constant metaphoring both seem to flat out say these are some type of monsters who act exactly like cuckoo birds. For all intents and purposes, they're big cuckoos who use humans as unwilling slaves to raise their brood. There is not much mystery or grandeur there. The imagery is done quite well and introduces more mysteries, such as the strange TV programs and images the boy seems able to read. I do recommend this film, and I did enjoy it a great deal. But if this film is truly a Twilight Zone-esque based horror, if that genre indeed even exists, Vivarium doesn't hold its weight when weighed against genre masterpieces such as 1997's Q, or even smaller budget romps such as 2012's Resolution. Of course, this is all just my opinion. If you disagree or I missed anything of value, please hit me up in the comments. Thank you so much for wading through the insanities of the Escher-esque based Twilight Zone-like Vivarium with me. If you liked any of this, please hit that like and subscribe and ring the bell. I have new videos coming out all the time. And until then, keep sleepwalking, my friends.